and it's all baloney, destined for doom. I am a fan of the Cybertruck. I saw that, I about hit the ceiling, and it'll kill them. You've got tons of crap. These guys are cheating. Guys, this is the wheel of the Cybertruck. I'm holding it in my hands. This is the Cyber Beast wheel. This thing is what puts 800 horsepower to the ground on off-road. This thing is a beast, but yet it's lightweight. Look at the design of this thing. So, so cool. We're here at Monroe, and it is so cool. They shredded apart this Cybertruck, and I can't wait to get into it. We're going to go speak to Sandy in just a minute, but i got to put this thing down. Well, guys, I'm here with the legend himself, the teardown titan, Sandy Monroe, <laughs> uh, a huge... Uh, I'm a huge fan, so I'm going to fangirl a little bit through this little <laughs> question and answer, so I hope that's okay. Yeah. Anyways, thank you for yeah. having us finally to hey. your home. And uh, yeah, we spent time with Sandy when we were in Western Canada, as well as when you were on your plaid cross, well, yeah. cross North America yeah, road North trip. North America, yeah. Uh, 2022 Model S plaid that you yep. tore apart. Yep. So that was fun. We met him in Toronto. So here we are in Auburn Hills, Michigan at Monroe & Associates, celebrating 35 years in business. So big round yeah. of applause to the Sandy mm -hmm. and the team. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big achievement. That's a big achievement. Tell us about this beast. I mean, there was so much build up to you guys waiting for this thing. Uh, what yeah. are your kind of off the cuff thoughts about the Cybertruck? So first off, I am a fan of the Cybertruck. This is a dichotomy. You either hate it or you love it and there's nothing in between. So I love it. My wife, not so much. Um, I like the fact that it's stainless steel. I am not going to put anything on mines outside, but I'm not putting any wraps on it. Okay. I like it just the way it is. Um, we put stickers on. But I think that this is the most revolutionary vehicle on the planet currently. Okay, so this, um, Elon Musk is universally hated by Wall Street because they never know what he's going to do next. He's universally hated by all the MBAs on the planet because he doesn't do, the, do what everybody else is supposed to do, right? like what they say to do. That's right. So <clears throat> this has got 48 volts versus, versus 12 volts. So let's have a look at this. This is a little example. Which one's 48 volts? Which one's 12 volts? Okay, well, I know, and you guys probably don't know, but I'm going to go with the thinner one is the yeah, higher voltage. That's right. So the higher the voltage, the easier it is to push the amps. Right. The lower the voltage, the little tougher it is. So when you look at these two right here, you're looking at one quarter the diameter. Right. So when you start looking at the volume of copper that just disappeared, um, you're looking at a tremendous amount of weight and cost and basically availability. Copper is turning into a real problem. So Tesla dropped a whole bunch of weight just by going from this to that. Incredible. And, um, and making their lives a whole lot easier. Now we look at this, this is the Ethernet, this is the Ethernet ring. This has got all the communications, and here it is, one, wow. one, like, uh, well actually it's two, flat bands. Yeah. Okay, the diameter of, if we took all of the communication cables that goes under CAN bus, it'd be about this big in diameter, okay? Mm -hmm. So the difference between a little flat wire and that, again, Huge amount of cost and weight, yeah. but even more importantly, because this is also steer by wire. Okay, I need this. I get a whole bunch of wonderful attributes that come from steer by wire. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we were just talking to, I was just talking to one of the guys. He has, uh, he had a Silverado. Now Silverado's right. got tremendous uh, range, eh? That's the all, EV, the new EV Silverado. The new EV, yeah. EV yeah. Silverado. Got Big tremendous, battery. yeah, huge battery. But you know what? Um, this guy was saying he's turning around the corner in the Silverado after being after driving the the Cybertruck. Cybertruck, there, I'm done. Yeah. Silverado coming off an expressway, you go like that, and you're going, you know, right. you forget that you're in an old fashioned car yeah. versus this one. And uh, again, you go back, and uh, for me, the number one thing from a driving standpoint is the fact that this has got rear wheel steering. That kicks the shit out of everything. Wow. You cannot believe the difference there is between driving this and, and driving any other truck of this size. So I, I look at this as a 250, an F-250 vehicle. <clears throat> um, but with rear steering, it steers like it's, uh, 
it steers like a Mustang. Wow. It, 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 it it's like turns a car. really, really tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, this is a, this is a huge, huge it, improvement over everything. You've been driving it, daily driving it? Yeah. So how is it? Like just kind of get up in the morning, go to work type of thing. Second nature now, I guess. Yeah. It, uh, initially, it takes a little bit of getting used to because I can get into parking spots that I could never get into right. um, with, uh, with uh, say, the Lightning or the Silverado or anything else. This thing is easy peasy. Now, a lot of you won't know, but uh, Sandy's wife, who's been on your channel a fair bit. Yeah, Susan. Um, yeah. Susan is such a sweetheart. So she drives a Rivian R1T pickup truck. Yes, she does. So when you hop into her car, do you see a big difference between the two? I haven't driven her car for quite a while. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, because she doesn't want me driving it. Um, but uh, but um, the Rivian is a wonderful vehicle. It's not this, and it's not an F-150, a Lightning, not a Lightning. Because you so took we have it off the too, didn't you? I did. Yeah. And that is the best off-road vehicle I've ever had. Wow. So if you're into off-roading, that's your car. Now, this one I haven't taken off-road, but... I, I now have three uh, uh, people who want me to show up at their track. I got M1 mm -hmm. that uh, just down the road here, they want me to come. Um, I, I got an invitation to utilize the uh, Honda uh, off-road truck uh, track, and I'm really excited about that. And then um, Holly Oaks uh, okay. has also uh, offered, hey, you want to come down and try it out? Because when I did the Rivian, when I when I took the Rivian off road and I, there was trees, you know, logs. I went over a log path that was like that big in diameter, huge amounts of swing and whatnot. Just, it handled better than anything, anything that I've ever had. So I think that, you know, if you want an off-road vehicle, then your, your best bet is, uh, is uh, the Rivian, Rivian right now, anyway. Yeah. Um, if you want a work truck, mm -hmm. nobody's going to beat the F-150 Lightning. No question about it. This thing does everything. This, <clears throat> this is for sportsmen that, um, you know, want to go out hunting and want to live in the, uh, in the truck like... Uh, uh, for, for, for me, I do not like getting up, crack of dawn, and walking three miles into the woods uh, to my blind. I want this. I want to park it. It doesn't make any noise. I park it, and then I'll get in here, close the tonneau, close the gate, yeah. and uh, take a nap, wake up at the crack, and, uh, crack of dawn, and uh, get out. And my guns are there. Everything's ready to go. I don't have to do a damn thing. I can I can put a microwave in there if I want to, yeah. uh, uh, you know, to have breakfast or something, and not worry about and not worry strategy. about it. exactly. So <laughs> taking it through the bush, exactly. So, so everything about this is for me. This is a sportsman's yeah. kind of thing. Rivian right now is off road and the best I think the best um, the best pickup for a family kind of an event, mm -hmm. and uh, and then the F one fifty Lightning pff, kicks everybody's tail when it comes to. Um, when it comes to a work truck with commercial use yeah. that sort of and thing. you know i i did work for a living yeah uh prior to uh becoming an engineer <clears throat> and um and i remember what it's like log in concrete blocks and everything else that thing i i mean i remember we had a house that we had to finish up and um and it was getting late we already lost time because there was a storm and everything else now the uh the problems start to show up like Hey, how do we light this thing up? We got no light. And then, oh, the compressor died. Mm. That thing, all these things happen. And uh, with the Cybertruck, it's no big wow. Yeah. Everything, everything that you want 
if you're in construction, is in that vehicle. And you don't find that on the F-150, the normal F-150. You just right. can't do it. Right. So. Yeah, portable power is a huge thing. Well, I'll ask you one last question, and we'll let you go, because you've got a huge lineup of crowd waiting yeah. outside for you. As far as the technology, the, the innovations <clears throat> that we're seeing in here, so we've got steer-by-wire, we've got 48 volt, we've got stainless steel, we've got the giga castings and all that good stuff, and there's a few others I'm sure I'm forgetting. Well, the rear-wheel um, steering. Rear-wheel steering, yeah. thank you. Uh, what is your vision for seeing that? Uh, transplanted into other vehicles down the road. Do you think those are going to spread through Tesla's lineup? Are is the OEM legacy manufacturers going to copy them? And and what do you think they're thinking? Legacy, kind of just as a as a secondary. What do you think they're thinking when they see this truck and what it's capable of and all the innovation? I think some of them. I think there's a various different kinds of thought patterns. I believe that there are some. Um, <clears throat> some uh, OEM leaders that um, are going to disregard, oh, it's just a passing fad and we're going to get into, uh, everybody's going to come back to diesel fuel and stuff like that. And that particular company, I believe, is destined for doom. I believe that uh, the Chinese, they'll have their, they'll, they'll take one look at this and like that fast, they'll be into 48 volts. They'll have the ethernet ring. They'll have the rear steering if they happen to make it in a big truck. Mm -hmm. They'll have everything that's on here, they'll have it, and they'll have it in about between one year and 18 months wow. because they don't have a set of rules. Mm. And that's the difference between North America and everybody like in, in China. They do not have a set of rules that say, well, wait a minute. No, you've got to buy this particular material. Mm -hmm. What about all this? Stuff? Well, we'll take us five years to get that material qualified. Yeah. And it's all baloney. It's all it does is waste times, waste money and hamstring the. And why is that? Well, because back in 56, we had a problem. with. Do you think we've moved ahead since 1956? Yeah. I mean, and these are not things I'm making up. This is the stuff that we bump into every time we get in with an OEM. We ask, well, why did you do that? Well, the spec said, well, hang on a second. The spec said what? Mm. Well, the spec said that this, this has to be uh, non-corrosive. And so you picked a very expensive, heavy-duty stainless steel. Yes, of course. Why didn't you use fiberglass? Mm -hmm. I mean, fiberglass, well, it's not in the spec. What do you mean it's not in the spec? It's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, fiberglass has been around forever. Yeah, but it, it wasn't there in 1956. And when I saw that, I about hit the ceiling. <laughs> and you know what? They stayed with that stainless steel. Wow. We got to follow the spec. You've got engineers that get disillusioned and leave. You've got tons of crap that, uh, that, that winds up in the marketplace that pisses off the customers. But we can't change these specs. Huh, these are holy. It's like they should have robes on when they wow. bring these things out. And that's why... It's going to be very difficult for the Europeans and the Americans to get ahead because they've got tremendous old fashioned rules and regulations, specifications and qualifications that they have to go through and it'll kill them. And when they're dead or near dead, then, well, maybe, well, what, what, what should we do? How did this happen? These guys are cheating. Oh, we got to stop. We got to cut out the, uh, the, the Chinese and we got to protectionism never works. Yeah, it's a crutch. And, and that's it. Yeah. For basically, that is it. Excellent. Well, so. thank you very much. And one thing I'll just kind of on the tail end here, you guys know that my background is in legacy automotive retail. Sandy's background was in legacy auto manufacturing and engineering. And I'm sure that we can see eye to eye that that old school mentality has trickled down into the retail side of how they're actually <clears> selling these cars and they're refusing to innovate. And yeah. so it's this whole mentality that really needs to be turned on its head. Listen, thank you very much, Sandy. Congratulations on thank 35 you. years. Thank, you, so thank much. you guys very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.